Hello and welcome to the somewhat confusing world of relative atomic mass, relative molecular mass, and also moles. Okay, the math involved is pretty straightforward, but the ideas can be a bit abstract at times. But if you think in terms of cooking, you would be able to make a cake with a certain amount of things, and making a molecule is no different. So it's about thinking out how many eggs and how much, how many bags of flour you'd be using, and then thinking out what the mass of all that is. Similar in principle. Look at all of these words. They're all words associated with a certain amount. For example, how many people would be in a duo or a trio? What is a Google? Uh, an octet, for example, how many, I'm sure you all know this one, uh, how many arms does an octopus have? Is in fact eight. And in chemistry, we have the octet rule, trying to get eight electrons in the outer shell to achieve stability there. A dozen, that is 12, or if you've got a baker's dozen, that's actually 13, because bakers are pure generous like that. Um, the popular 2000s band Destiny's Child began life as a trio, uh, well, they finished as a trio, but they actually began as a quartet. And here we have a very young looking Beyonce. Okay, bonus points if you can name all the other three. Uh, Google, with an E as a search engine, uh, and but Google, uh, a number is one followed by a hundred zeros. It's an enormously stupid number. Uh, okay, that's where the search engine takes its name from. And here we have the dynamic duo of Batman and Robin. Is oh, there? And then a score, maybe not familiar with that one, but if you have a score of something, it's twenty. So, what is a mole? A mole is a number. If you have one mole of any substance. That is, in fact, that number of them, atoms or molecules. So you could have a mole of bananas would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23 bananas. You could have a mole of carbon, a mole of oxygen atoms, a mole of oxygen molecules, because remember, oxygen likes to hang around with a buddy. So one mole is equal to that number of atoms, or if it's a molecule, that number of molecules. That is known as Avogadro's constant. So the way that a lot of people remember this is between moles and Avogadro, sounds kind of like a guacamole. Guacamole is made from avocados. One mole mole is made from one Avogadro. So take from that what you will, but um, that's an easy way to remember how many is in a mole. An Avogadro is constant for this number of mole, uh, atoms. So, what we will be using a lot today is the relative atomic mass. You will need a periodic table, and what you will find is you have the atomic number on the bottom, that's the number of protons, and you will have the relative atomic mass on the top. This is to do with neutrons and protons and the relative distribution of isotopes, but basically, if you, it's not covered in the grade 10 physical sciences course yet, but we, we will just use it as a number for the calculation just now. So you'll need a periodic table. If you don't have one, I'm going to show one up next, but one mole of oxygen, you take the relative atomic mass and you stick a G on the end of it for grams. That is the mass in grams of one mole of oxygen. The relative atomic mass becomes mass. So. Here is the periodic table that I'm going to use. It's a little bit simplified, but you can see the atomic numbers, uh, which have no decimals. And then we have the relative atomic mass, uh, which is the one with decimals at the top there. So in order to figure out one mole of nickel, all you would do is stick a G on the end of it. 58.7 grams of nickel. That's how much is in one mole, or this is how many atoms would be in one mole of nickel. Okay, because all the masses of all these elements are different. So as you go down the periodic table, one mole gets heavier and heavier. The one mole of hydrogen is one gram because the relative atomic mass of hydrogen is one. But one mole of gold is uh, 197 grams. Okay, 10 moles of gold, and you're talking about, you know, something that's kind of fairly heavy to carry. So this is a periodic table we'll be using today. So mass and moles. Moles are used when calculating amounts of an element or molecule. 
So for atoms, this is the calculation. Uh, we have mass on the top in grams, and then we have moles and relative atomic mass, which don't have units. So in order to figure out uh, what one mass, uh, one mole of oxygen weighs, we simply look at the relative atomic mass. And if we want one mole of that, we multiply that by number by one, and that should give us 16 grams. That is one mole of oxygen atoms. Okay. For molecules, it's a bit different because oxygen likes to hang around with a buddy, doesn't it? It is diatomic, O2. Two oxygen atoms held together by a double bond in a molecule. So in order to figure out the relative molecular mass, because we're now talking about molecules, we have 16 plus 16, which will give us 32 grams. From a relative molecular mass of 32, all I've done is multiplied that by one mole. So one mole of oxygen gas is equal to 32 grams, whereas one mole of oxygen atoms, singular, is only 16 grams. We can try the same thing with water. Can you figure out what the relative molecular mass would be? Well, you start with a formula, H2O. From there, we figure out the relative molecular mass, the relative molecular mass of the whole molecule. So we've got two hydrogens, there they are there, and we've got one oxygen molecule, uh, one oxygen atom, which is here. We add those together and we get the relative molecular mass. So one mole of water, one mole of water with a relative atomic mass of 18, would simply be 18 grams of water. So in calculating the relative atomic mass, really straightforward. Look at the top. There we go. We have the relative atomic mass right there. Now, if we're figuring out molecules, then we simply have to figure out what the formula is. So chlorine is diatomic, likes to hang around with a buddy. So we've got two chlorine molecules. What do we do? We use the top of uh, the information here, the relative atomic mass. Chlorine is two of these, giving us a relative molecular mass of 71. So for example, two moles of chlorine gas would be two times 71, gives us 142 grams. Nitrogen and oxygen, which we mentioned at the top there, Nitrogen dioxide, which is a pretty horrible pollutant. We've got one nitrogen, two oxygens. There they are. That gives us a relative molecular mass of 46. So if I have a two moles of a nitrogen dioxide, that would simply be two times 46, which would be 92 grams. Hope that makes a bit of sense.